Hello and welcome to Simple French Cooking. My name is Francois and today I'm standing out here in my garden in Vermont. It's a beautiful sunny day. I just picked these beautiful shallots and I want to teach you one of my favorite classic bistro dishes. It's saute of chicken in a vinegar sauce. Oh God, this is going to be awesome. So come join me in the kitchen and let's get cooking. Good ingredients are the foundation to great cuisine. You are what you eat. You know, take for instance this chicken. This chicken comes from Foggy Brook Farm in Fairfield, Vermont. These are my local chicken producers. I mean, it's an amazing chicken. What I love about it, it's got more flavor and more texture than just a store-bought chicken. Um, I know they raise these chickens really well because I can see like the yellow fat. I mean, it's just, you probably can't see it on camera, but it's just a beautiful chicken. You know, the shallots came from my garden. I just picked them a few seconds ago. Um, one of the components of this dish is tomato concentrate. Now you could use tomato paste, certainly a lot of recipes online or in the older French cookbooks, they use tomato paste. Um, I took a tomato that I grew in my garden and I just slowly cooked it to reduce down. And to me, it's just got a better flavor. Anyways, let's get cooking. So obviously I'm not seasoning my sheet pan here. What I'm doing is putting my seasonings on the sheet pan and then I'm gonna put my chicken in there and I find that I get a really nice even mix of seasoning on, on my chicken. So I'm using black pepper, salt, and just a little bit of herbs de Provence, you know, my go-tos. Now just break down your chicken. You just want the wing sections. Um, you want the legs and thighs separate and then the breast and that's it. I've done this a bunch of times so I speeded it up just a hair. You know, if you want, you can make your life much simpler and just buy a chicken that's already cut up. But I, I like to do the whole chickens because that way I have the carcass at the end and then I can make stock. And be sure to get that little oyster behind the thigh. That is the best part. And if you don't want to watch me breaking down this chicken, just jump to the next chapter. Um, look down below in the notes and you'll see that. Now I want my chicken skin crispy, so I'm gonna dip the skin side in a little bit of flour. If you don't want to eat flour or you're gluten-free, just simply skip it. It really honestly makes such a small difference. All right, time to start cooking the chicken. Now I'm using a mixture of oil and butter. Um, butter straight, you might just burn the butter. Oil helps kind of raise the temperature that you can cook in. And once you get it nice and brown, put all the pieces skin side down and just cook them till they're beautifully golden brown. Ah, I just love the smell of chicken cooking. Right, and once they've browned on one side, just flip them over and put a nice sear on the other side. You know, so I got the idea to make this dish because I was watching videos on YouTube and I saw Paul Bocuse's chef uh, making this in, as a tribute to Paul Bocuse. And it just, uh, it's a dish I love. I mean, it's a simple dish. You have it 
All throughout French history, you have various versions. In the old days, they made it with demi glace this version. Today, it's gonna to be made with chicken stock. Um, some people use homemade tomato concentrate. Some people use tomato paste. Some people put tomatoes, some use shallots. Um, I saw one recipe that used like 20 heads of garlic. I mean, it's crazy. So there's a wide variety, but the essence of the sauce is made from vinegar. And I don't know if you know, but the word vinegar means um, acidic wine uh, somewhere over here or there. I put a graphic so you can see the origins of the word. Anyways, we're gonna take our shallots and I always save these green tops. You know, first of all, you can use them in anything like that where you'd use green onions. I mean, it's exactly that. Lately, I've been making a Chinese dish of uh, uh, a spare rib that's cooked in uh, soy and mirin with like all of these just cut into one inch sections and it's slowly braised for about, I don't know, an hour, two hours until the meat's tender. Uh, it's just a wonderful Chinese dish. Uh, I use this in stir fry, so don't ever throw that stuff away. At, at worst case, compost it and give it to your garden. And so we're just gonna trim the ends off of our shallots. Uh, my shallots in the yard started forming skins. Um, these will keep for a long time if you do grow them at home. Um, but anyways, let's just get them all trimmed up. I just trimmed the ends off of your shallots. Then I'm gonna peel the outer layer. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want a hard outer layer because it's gonna be uh, it just will be tough when you're eating it. And then I just dice it as fine as I can. Um, the shallots kind of melt away in the dish. They add a sweetness that counterbalances the vinegar in the sauce. Once the chicken is fully browned on both sides, just remove it, keep it to the side. We're going to be adding it back soon. Uh, now just add a little butter to the pan. And you know, if I were in a restaurant, I might be compelled to use a fresh pan. But when I'm cooking it at home, I don't mind little bits of the, uh, the chicken and the sauce. To me, it adds to the rustic quality. All right, so we're gonna drop our shallots in and just saute them for about five minutes. We're just looking for them to get soft. Be sure to season them up with a little bit of salt and pepper and make sure you stir them. The last thing you want is to burn them. Now we're gonna add the vinegar in two stages. Now I'm adding probably about half a cup of vinegar in total, but really what we're not trying to do is boil the shallots, you know, we're just deglazing the pan, then reducing it down, then we're adding a little more vinegar, and we're gonna let that cook a bit, then add our tomato concentrate that we made, or you could put a tablespoon of tomato paste if you don't have uh, your own homemade tomato concentrate. And then just stir it up into the sauce, get it nice and mixed in, and then we're gonna add our chicken stock, and my chicken stock has so much gelatin in it. It comes from the foggy brook chickens I buy. There's just so much gelatin in it. Anyways, we're gonna drop our chicken pieces in, bring this up to a boil, lower it down to a simmer, cover it, and just let it cook until the chicken thighs are thin. Now bear in mind, the breasts will probably be done long before the, the thighs. So be sure to take them out in probably about 20 minutes or so. Now your cooking time will vary because if you're using a store-bought chicken, it'll probably cook a little bit quicker. Anyways, let's cover it up and let it cook. One of the key components of the dish, obviously, is the vinegar kind of hard to have chicken sauteed in a vinegar sauce uh, without vinegar. 
Um, now I've seen a lot of recipes at, at Paul Bocuse's restaurant, they use red wine vinegar. That is a great choice. Um, but for me, I decided to use a champagne vinegar from Toulouse Vineyards in California. Now, first of all, Toulouse is one of the best vineyards in Northern California. Um, if you love Pinot Noir, you need to go there. And if you've been there, you already know how cool Vern is and Rita, who's the winemaker. This is a um, champagne vinegar that Rita makes and she uses 100% fermented Pinot Noir. So this is better than the red wine vinegar that I have. So I'm going to use this for this dish. Um, anyways, I think you can buy this online from their website. I'll put a link to their website in the in the browser, or wherever, somewhere down here, up there, over there. Uh, it'll be in the show notes. And by the way, if you are in California and you're in the San Francisco area, head up north to Mendocino. Be sure to stop by Toulouse and taste their wines. It is amazing. Oh my God, my house smells so incredible right now. Mm. You're going to love this dish, I promise you. Oh. oh, God, you know, and the the vinegar, I know a lot of people are thinking right now that the vinegar is going to make this dish really acidic. And it's not true. It just makes the flavors more complex on your tongue. One thing you see in a lot of upscale restaurants, even some homes, is people add a couple tablespoons of butter to the sauce at the end. So if you're inclined to do that, just add it in. We're going to give it a good stir. I'm also going to take some tarragon from my garden and just clip it on the top. Chicken and tarragon, perfect combination. You know, and if you're looking for a great wine to drink, I would definitely suggest a Burgundy, Birds and Bergs. That's, that's the general rule in cooking. All right, let's give this a stir and a try. Mm. Oh, that sauce is so incredible and drooling. I think that's like one of the hallmarks of my channel, isn't it? At some point I drool on myself, at least my, that's what my wife tells me. And this is just, mm, mm, so beautiful. All right, let's take a little piece out here on the board. Actually, let's take a piece off the breast here. Mm, mm. God. Mm. I tell you, these chickens from Foggy Brook Farm are insanely delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. This is incredible. I wish all of you were here to enjoy this with me. Mm. Mm. You know, I'm eating this for lunch today. Don't tell my wife I had another bite. Mmm. 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 Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, you know, they take a lot of effort. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment. If there's a dish you want to see me make, classic French, I would be happy to do it for you. I'll leave that in the comments. Please like my video. And above all, I would love if you subscribed. Anyways, thanks so much for watching Simple French Cooking. I'll catch you next week.